this church Come experience them you discover there is an atmosphere of secondhand smoke in what Maya called these yet to be United States of America I think you know about that atmosphere of secondhand smoke we call it white supremacy it's a spirit it's a system that exists in this nation don't just get upset when someone calls you the n-word be more upset about a system and a spirit of white supremacy that treats you like the N-word, that denies your opportunity and denies your humanity. It's the secondhand smoke that if you're not careful, you will content yourself with simply watch this, an inhaler that makes you feel good temporarily, but it does not deal with the secondhand smoke of a system and structure that denies your humanity. It's not just who killed Eric Garner and who killed Mike Brown. It's what killed them, and I declare what killed them was a mentality. And watch this policing that is rooted in a DNA in policing that never was meant to serve and protect us. I think it was Chuck D that raised the question when he said, you are meant to serve and protect us, but who is going to protect us from you? I think he's on to something right there by declaring in essence that there is is a system in the supremacy that says, and here it is, what killed Trayvon Martin, what killed Oscar Grant, what killed Mike Brown, what killed Tamir Rice, it was the criminalization and dehumanization of black bodies in this nation that goes all the way back to a constitution that did not know what to do that with the glaring contradiction of a nation talking about liberty and justice for all but at the same time uh, enslaving black bodies so what do we do we can't make them human so we've got to declare they are less than human they are three-fifths human and once we make them three-fifths human it's okay to dehumanize them and criminalize them and all I'm trying to say is the secondhand smoke of white supremacy in a real sense is what killed uh, and what continues to kill in our communities and so here we were at Ventura Elementary School we were living with a reign of terror we were living with we were apathetic about a situation that was adversarial to our educational expectations and aspirations how dare you become apathetic to an atmosphere that is adversarial to what God intends for you to become and that my brothers and sisters is perhaps what was being addressed in the context of our text because we all know the gospel globe trotter and trailblazing theologian from Tarsus the articulate African apostle Paul had written uh, the Christians in Rome and when he wrote the redeemed in Rome he is sharing his theology I like that because all of us have a theology my question is is your theology borrowed from people watching this who never meant you any good I, I gotta stop right there because someone went off on me on Facebook recently and they were talking about they don't like Pastor Haynes because Freddie Haynes believes in that black liberation theology and doesn't he know that's a man-made theology now let me let you know this is a black person saying this nonsense he said trying to be real smart and so I engaged him in conversation uh, and I had to let him go when he said but man uh, don't you know your theology is man-made uh, I then came back at him and said just in case you did not know it whatever you believe about God is man-made uh, why because it's been taught to you by someone uh, down here it was not given to you directly by 
like God. Your theology is man-made. It's you seeing God from your perspective and your experience. And when you don't borrow your perspective from someone else and instead have a relationship with God yourself, you recognize the wisdom of, of one who said mama may have and papa may have, but God bless the child that's got his own. All of us have our own theology. And so Paul is espousing his theology. And I love it because he is elegantly eloquent as he utilizes history and philosophy and poetry as well as logic in order to convey his concepts about Christ and his theology about the God above us. And I love it because now, by way of the context of our text, it begins in chapter 14. And from chapter 14, verse 1, up to the 13th verse, verse of chapter 15, Paul is dealing with how we all relate to one another. It's really amazing because Paul recognizes that even in, Ro in the Roman church, you had outsiders and insiders. You had those who were up and in, and you had those who were down and out. You had Gentiles, and you had Jewish Christians. And so Paul said because of the racial disharmony and differentiation that exists in the church, I've got to address that he talked specifically to those who are strong and said when God blesses you with privileges God gives you privileges to use them for the underprivileged you are not blessed just to enjoy the blessing yourself but once you get blessed you recognize that since God bless you you have a responsibility to bless people that can't pay you back I gotta stop right there because y'all just missed a shout cue right there and that is since God has blessed you. You ought to bless somebody that can't do anything back for you. Anybody can be a blessing to somebody that's going to give you a raise. Anybody can be a blessing to somebody that's going to open up a door for you. But the real test of your Christian character is what do you do for people who can't do anything back? Christian West Baptist Church.